Hello everyone and welcome to your third lesson for practical research too and this time we will be dealing with the nature of variables. For this particular discussion I will be citing the work of Kumar in 2011 that he's actually my favorite reference in practical research too. Okay so what actually are variables. Variables are characteristics or a quantity of a phenomenon that is the focus of a research project. Now, from the word itself, variables, okay? A variable is something that varies. Now, you may ask, how many variables can we actually use or involve in our research project? To be very honest, there is no limit in the number of variables. However, the more variables you um, involve, the more complex the research becomes. And the more complex the research becomes, the longer the time for data collection. Okay, that's just a warning anyway. So let us proceed. What are the general characteristics of variables? First one is, of course, a variables can be measured or categorized. For example, gender, hair color, shoe size, income level. So those are some um, types of, or those are actual variables. Another characteristic is that variables may be complex, so there is this distinction between conceptual versus operational variables. What do I mean by that? Um, some variables, for example, socioeconomic status. Um, you would often see this as one of the um, uh, things that the researcher would ask in a survey questionnaire. For some researchers, they use socioeconomic um, status uh, as... Uh, let's say a type of income or the income range of a particular family or socioeconomic status could also mean ownership of a permanent housing do you own um, a, your own house okay do you own a house so that's one um, example another one very famous academic achievement if some of our researchers would use academic achievement to mean they're just their test scores or the participants' test scores in uh, a quarter. But for some researchers, they uh, uh, use the term academic achievement as the totality of the, the participants' grade for the whole school year. So it actually varies from one research to another. And last but not the least, research variables can measure abstract concepts. Well, intelligence, um, the sense of religiosity, the well-being, self-esteem, these are popular terms, no? And uh, they are generally called as variables. Now, what are the roles of variables in your research? How important are they? Well, in, not only because they are the topics in the research, but also variables provide focus to the study. Another one, variables can also be um, search items or search terms in Google, okay? And variables are directly affected by research methods and tools. This one will elaborate later on. So just a warning again, so if you pick the wrong variables, the findings of your study may go in a different direction, in a different and unexpected direction. Now, variables are also useful when you are searching for other studies. So, for example, um, it's about academic achievement. So, these are already key terms or keywords that you would uh, search, okay? And it's easier for you to find relevant literatures or journals if you have uh, a good set of variables. Now, there are four major types of variables. I am pretty sure that you have already um, heard about these uh, four types. The number one is, of course, the independent variable. Okay, Independent variable influences or predicts change on dependent variables. So, researchers observe the change in dependent variables as the independent variable changes. Okay. Later on, we'll elaborate 
However, um, one thing is for sure, independent variable causes, okay, the change, okay? It doesn't change, it causes the change. There are two types of independent variables. The first one is active independent variable or the active IV. Active independent variable is actually the intervention or condition that is being applied to the participants. So it could just be one um, science program, okay? Remember that example from the previous lesson? It could be a science program that you want to implement uh, as, a, as a response to an existing yet very old tradition, okay, of... Uh, science uh, program in the school so that is an active independent variable anything that you inject implement that would serve as an intervention another type of iv is attribute independent variable it's the instruments uh, the intrinsic characteristics of the participants that are suspected of causing a result for example you may want to examine whether gender Okay, gender is an intrinsic characteristic, okay? That means it's an attribute, okay? So you want to experiment or examine whether gender affects the, the higher or the, the lower score in certain skills, okay? If that is the case, gender could be considered as an attribute IV because uh, you want to consider it in the actual experiment, okay? Now, another type of variable is, yes, the exact opposite of independent, that is dependent variable. It actually depends on the IV. So, this one is the one that is changing, okay? Dependent variables are the outcomes or results of the influence of IV. Now, dependent variables actually answer the question, what do I observe? Okay, what do I observe happening when I apply the intervention? Okay, and also the dependent variable receives the intervention or from what we had earlier, the active IV. Now, you may be wondering how come um, there are some factors that I didn't even consider but somehow they, I think they, they affected the results of my study. That is actually a type of variable which is called extraneous variable. It may affect the research outcomes but have not adequately considered in the study. How can you address the issue on extraneous variable? It's simple. Make sure that you um, uh, put it in the scope and limitation of the study, okay? Even though, uh, the re even though the research is limited to this, uh, to these two, say, variables or independent variables, this particular factor may actually affect it. However, we or the researchers did not consider it. Okay, so that is inserting it into the scope and limitation of the study. Also, if you feel like um, the extraneous variable is also a big factor in the results and discussions, um, you may want to recommend it. So that's chapter 5. Recommend the recommendation that um, for further studies or for future studies, the researchers may use this variable instead, which have not been um, adequately considered in the present study. So that is extraneous variable. It's an extra. Last but not the least, we have demographic variable or the characteristics or attributes of subjects that are collected to describe the sample. Just a quick one. How is it different from an attribute IV provided that they are both characteristics? Of course, when you say attribute IV, that causes change. Okay, but if you simply ask your respondents whether they are male or female, um, what is their religion, but you did not consider these factors as uh, affecting whatever the result of the study, then it is just a demographic variable. Okay, they are just collected to describe the sample. Hopefully, that uh, 
um, enlightens you with the four types of variables. And so on our next episode, we will see what are the four major scales of measurement of variables. So stay tuned.